playthrough today of um, tracks from Into the Blues Volume 4. Uh, that one came out a little while ago and uh, it's been spreading around the world. Uh, so I'm really uh, happy with how that one came out actually. And um, so yeah, I just uh, wanted to, you know, introduce it to maybe some of you guys if you haven't if already, you know, uh, had a go on it. Uh, you can grab a free download or I think there's two two free downloads actually uh, available on the album, so the link is down there. And um, you can also grab that and anything from my website today actually uh, with the code MARCH10, or is it MARCH6? It's down there, anyway, so uh, check it out. Uh, and um, yeah, so I'm gonna launch into uh, some of the tracks See what happens and uh, let me know where you guys are. I always like to know where people are in the world. Uh, leave a comment, tell me where you are. And um, yeah, so the first one I'm gonna play is the first track off of the album. And that one actually has both a uh, tab for the intro solo and also a full on uh, lesson on how to play that intro solo. And a lesson where I kind of talk about, you know, some of the concepts that are being used. That track is so freaking popular it came out less than a year ago and already is getting close to two million views so uh, I've linked that in the description as well if you want to dive into that uh, that tab that lesson is on my patreon it's where all that stuff goes I'm putting an enormous amount of work into my patreon at the moment uh, so you know uh, check it out I appreciate the support very much on there as well all right so I'm gonna have a little play let me know where you guys are at and uh, let's get uh, let's get into it there we go. So, yeah. Thank you. 
one in the sexy series I call them the sexy series now uh, after I think somebody referred to it as the sexy series so I was like well that's what that's called now because I was calling uh, tracks you know like sexy uh, for a while and um, it became a thing so I'm probably gonna put out or I am gonna put out a sexy series album um, pretty soon uh, with jams uh, of, of that series um, and actually since we're talking about that I think number three, oh no, that one isn't in the sex series, I thought it was. Um, see if I can remember my own, uh, my own albums here. <laughs> um, but yeah guys, uh, let me see where you are all at. Um, thank you, Eddie, appreciate the, the kind words. Holland is in the house. Hey Marcel, good to have you. Uh, Guitar Fiesta, Javier, Mexico, awesome. Michigan in the house. UK, my old stomping ground, is in the house. Uh, Alberta, Canada, lovely. I love, uh, love Alberta, actually, I have been there. Um, do you have any jazz blues comping lessons? Uh, I do have some stuff uh, about jazz blues. Uh, I have quite, uh, quite a few transcriptions and uh, some lesson material as well on uh, Patreon. So hit up the Patreon if you're looking for lessons. Uh, I actually also have been um, taking on a few more Skype students recently. I'm basically pretty much, and I'm this close to hitting the roof as to how many that I can um, deal with. But you know, if, if that's something that you wanna dig into, um, again, hit me up on uh, the easiest way, the best way to get um, to the front of the queue is, uh, or the line, as you say in America, is uh, to go through Patreon. So um, there we go. Yeah, I definitely have some stuff with, uh, about uh, jazz blues uh, up there. Uh, I can guide you to it. Um, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds cold. What up, Stefan? St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Wow, okay, cool. And Toulouse, France. Western Sahara. Amazing. Welcome, uh, Lemnais here. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, Massachusetts in the house. Love it. Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, and Chris Brown. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it very much. Um, that shall buy me a nice cup of hot tea later. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to enjoy that. Um, man, I was looking for a backing track for bass practice and now I'm playing with a live guitar player. That's awesome. Uh, so actually I, I put out, um, I just put out a new um, bass jam. Uh, I noticed that the ones I put out, I put out a batch of them, uh, especially in, I think it was 2016. And a lot of those tracks are so popular. It's like, it's crazy. So I've actually put on, uh, a bunch of them are now also on Spotify. In fact, many of my jam albums are now on Spotify. 
uh, you can check the link, including the album that I'm playing on right now, Into the Blues. Uh, there, there's a link for the both the Spotify and for Into the Blues on Spotify. Um, and uh, actually, the bass jams have uh, have uh, really found a life on Spotify as well already. Um, so uh, so it's interesting. And uh, yeah, you guys play play along. You know, play along uh, whether you play the bass or the or the guitar. I love it. Now I'm gonna dive into another jam in a minute, and then you know. Uh, we may even talk, we can talk uh, about a few concepts along the way. Uh, let me know if there's anything specific you want to you wanna dive into. Uh, Oregon in the house. Um, are you playing with digital system, uh, says Marco. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but um, I'm pl the amp that I'm playing through is a good old uh, Blues Junior, actually, uh, on this occasion. So uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty old school. I'm using the Spring Reverb in the amp and also uh, I've got a bit of reverb from um, Strymon Big Sky as well. Uh, so there we go. And Atlanta in the house, Germany in the house, Cup of Joe, <laughs> appreciate it. Ah, uh, oh, harmonica player, nice. Big Jason Ritchie fan, that's so awesome. I'm guessing that I have Jason Ritchie to thank for um, you coming into um, the, the Quiz Jam family. And uh, funny enough, actually, I'm a, uh, uh, I did a couple of uh, like full band jam sessions with, uh, or a, a couple of tracks in a, in a full band jam session that I put together with Jason Ritchie. Uh, it's actually a while ago, but um, I, uh, you know, uh, it took a while to kind of um, to get it processed and whatnot. We're we're uh, uh, not entirely there yet, but um, I will actually be dropping a uh, collaboration with uh, Jason Ritchie, the absolute genius of a harmonica player. We had a great time in the studio and uh, those recordings will soon see the light of day. So uh, I really look forward to sharing those with you guys. Um, he's, uh, he's a phenomenal player. So, uh, so there we go. All right, I'm gonna play another track. Um, let, so I'm gonna, play, um, I'm gonna play track number two, which is like an acoustic kind of vibe uh, in E like a slidey kind of vibe. And uh, let me know if there's uh, any specific um, blues from the album that you wanna hear, or if you wanna hear, you know, a fast or a slow or a, you know, a certain key, or if there's any topic that you wanna be talking about within the topic of blues uh, soloing, uh, let me know. Uh, but here we go, I'm gonna try out track number two from Into the Blues, volume four. Thank you. 
Delta Delta Blues uh, there, uh, recorded with uh, actually this uh, this guitar here. Oh, you can't really see it. Um, that has actually not been used for a little while. But yeah, on this old uh, this old fella right here that I bought um, in London. Uh, I'm not even gonna try and put it back in. Uh, I bought that in London uh, many years ago. Cost like hardly anything, and uh, it's beautiful. Really like to play it. Uh, it's very, very playable. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard work to play, but I just love the way it sounds. So that makes it, you know, playable from the perspective that it's e very easy to make it sound great uh, if you plug it into a nice uh, amp. And um, yeah, uh, that one's cool. Uh, I did a, a recording on it. I did a, a version of Crossroads uh, that is on my uh, Spotify. That's linked below as well, actually. Um, and uh, it's on here on YouTube as well. Um, check that out if you want to see that uh, guitar in, in, in action. Um, yeah, guys. Oh, Marcel, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate the uh, the super chat. That's most awesome. Uh, and Euros as well. Love it. Um, okay, so Suleiman says, are you just playing pentatonic? Any different modes? So right there, I was kind of getting a little bit jazzy about it, I guess, in terms of, um, you know... Uh, how I was thinking I was very much allowing myself to go beyond the sort of 
classic minor pentatonic or even major pentatonic kind of thing. So I was, I was playing E minor pentatonic, this was an E. So I was going, you know. I was definitely doing some E minor pentatonic, um, but uh, I was also doing some major pentatonic. E major pentatonic, or in other words, uh, C sharp minor pentatonic, same, same deal. If you prefer to think, you know, minor pentatonic, you can always think of the relative minor, which in the case of E major is C sharp minor. Uh, okay, so um, those two I was, I was playing around with, I was mixing those two, but then I was also thinking, you know, uh, quite a lot of mixolydian. So for each chord, you know, you consider it a, a seventh chord, so the E chord being the one chord. Uh, the E7, you know, I was allowing myself to think um, E mixolydian and, and adding some like um, chromatic notes here and there as well. Uh, like passing tones and whatnot, but yeah, That's... so I was trying to not get too like shredded with a with like super like sort of shred world kind of licks, but but more you know, but trying you know, trying to use mixolydian in a in a, in a way that sits well with uh, a blues as as sort of traditional as that one I was just playing, uh, I guess you know I was kind of you know playing around with mixolydian there and 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 the same goes for all the other chords you know the B chord and the, and the A chord uh, was thinking B mixolydian there and A mixolydian there. or as many of you guys know the way I like to think of it is to see it from the perspective of the key that we're in which is E so I was thinking rather than thinking B mixolydian. I'm thinking like E major, which is the same seven notes as B mixolydian, and then I'm thinking E, uh, sorry A, uh, no, I'm thinking E Dorian, where where it's A mixolydian. But rather than thinking A over the A chord, I like to think E Dorian, um, because like I said, we're in E, so I like to think of it from the perspective of the key that we're in. Kind of helps. Um, make things more um, melodic, I find, anyway. So um, that's kind of my uh, approach to that. Um, so there we go, guys. Uh, I hope that that um, answered your question uh, to some extent. And uh, actually also, um, I should say um, that I'm gonna be doing a large size uh, giveaway very, very soon. Uh, I am L probably, I guess, less than two weeks away from the channel hitting 100 million views on YouTube, which is insane <laughs> uh, and something that I'm obviously extremely grateful for. Uh, I've got a few companies involved, uh, definitely have Ernie Ball um, and uh, a few other companies uh, have agreed to um, sponsor a giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, just to celebrate, you know, this uh, milestone. It's a, uh, quite a bit of a man milestone, I guess. Uh, you know, it's taking taking almost ten years uh, f of of doing this, uh, growing this jam fam. But it's crazy that we're now at you know a hundred million views uh, and still grow. You know, still growing crazily all the time. It's uh, it's very cool and uh, very very grateful for it. So I'm gonna try and give back with a with a, a giveaway. Uh, and um, the main prize will be um, given to uh, somebody from Patreon, somebody who's already signed up with me on Patreon. So if you're not currently, you know, I mean, even it'll be anybody from anybody who is signed up for one dollar to the people that are signed up for a hundred dollars uh, for the Skype lessons and all, and, and all of that. So, but it, you know, just anybody uh, who's signed up on Patreon, that'll be. Um, I'll be giving the, the main prize to one of my patrons because I, you know, really appreciate the support on there. Um, and, and it's a community that I'm, like I said earlier, it's something that I'm putting a lot of effort into these days. I'm trying to provide uh, a lot of content on there and, you know, have regular series uh, like the the Wednesday warm ups going and, you know, regular in, uh, intro um, solo tabs and uh, scale maps and... Uh, 
all these kind of things and also all these live um live streams that we have uh, the lessons and and this kind of hang here uh, they go up on patreon as well and are available there um for all eternity so to speak um because they don't uh, they don't all remain on youtube uh, so there we go guys um we're gonna have another jam uh let's see what where's the uh conversation going here um Yes, indeed, you can blend major and minor pentatonic. It's like such a, um, such an integral part of, uh, you know, like a blues sound. You know, with a major kind of blues, uh, to be able to, you know, use both the, the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic because they, the sound of the minor pentatonic over a blues, which has a major third and a, you know a major key kind of context, that's very much. It's a very classic kind of blues sound. It's uh, theoretically wrong, you know, um, music theory-wise, but it's uh, that's the sound of the blues, and and uh, it's the power of the minor pentatonic, which uh, the power is great. Love that thing, you know. The the minor pentatonic is it's a strong thing, guys. So uh, it's worth um, worth exploring. And uh, yeah, so now we did a um, we did a minor, uh, sorry, a major blues. Let's do uh, let's do something minor. Um, so. Uh, we could do, I can do a bossa, which is track number nine. I can do the Frank Zappa style A minor jam. Uh, there's an E flat minor jam. Uh, there's a soul jazz um, kind of a Clapton and Crusaders uh, style jam in G minor. Uh, which one of those four do you want, guys? So the, the, the soul jazz one in G minor, the blues in E flat minor, the uh, Zappa style A minor or um, the bossa nova blues in E minor. Let me know uh, which one you, uh, you guys prefer and I will uh, I'll, um, have a little dive into that one and then uh, we can uh, talk about some of the approach uh, happening there. Actually, before as well, I do that. Let me give away uh, a copy of Into the Blues as well. Um, how are we going to do that? Let's, let's do a little, uh, let's do a little quizzy quiz. Uh, so, um, yeah, tell me, tell me, um, tell me what mode I'm playing guys. And then I'll give, I'll give away a, um, a copy of Into the Blues Volume 4 to the first person who can tell me what mode I'm playing right now. Um, it's an A, the, the root note is A, but tell me which mode I'm playing.
any of you guys can tell me what mode I was playing right there. So it's A, uh, based, but um, let me see if uh, any of you guys got that. Um, boom, Phil, 93, I'm pretty, yeah, you were first. Uh, that is indeed Phrygian right there. You got it. Uh, okay, so Phil, um, if you send me an email, just head on over to, um, there's a link to it, quistorama.com gem tracks. Um, you can uh, get in contact with me there. There's a contact section. Uh, just tell me which album that you would like. Uh, actually, you know, you can have uh, Into the Blues Volume 4, uh, but uh, if you want something else instead, you're welcome to that as well. Um, or, or as well. I don't really mind. Uh, you can have Into the Blues Volume 4 and what uh, another album as well. That's how we roll. Uh, so, uh, you can uh, totally have that. Just um, write me uh, an email there and tell me which one you want. Um, so there you go. Ask for a guitar. <laughs> cool. Okay, so uh, the bossa was um, was uh, the first one to get mentioned. Oh, and Dev oh, Devon in the house. Ian Thompson is in the house. Uh, love it. Okay, so... Um, and actually, Ian... Um, uh, was the catalyst of a new um, jam, a new place for the jam family to get together, which is on Facebook. Uh, if you look up, uh, if any of you guys are on Facebook, uh, look up the um, group. It's called Quist Backing Jam Tracks uh, Forum, uh, something to that uh, effect. Um, that is a new little uh, forum where um, uh, you have to get accepted as a member, but obviously um, we accept anybody who's there with good intentions and to uh, share their uh, jams on the jam tracks. Uh, it's already become a really great little uh, family um, and uh, people are sharing all their jams. It's, uh, it's pretty great. So uh, if you're on Facebook and that's your kind of vibe and you like to share your playing, um, head on over there, guys. All right, here comes the bossa. Um, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do, yeah, that's a six, seven minute check, so we'll, we'll do that one. And um, yeah, there we go. So it's an E minor. See if I can remember how it goes. I'm gonna, about to find out, I guess.
Uh, that one took me by a surprise a couple of times. I kept wanting it to go to the five. You know, where, uh, where a five would normally go to the five, but I forgot that it was like a, uh, you know, like a the thrill is gone type of uh, blues where you go to the, um, what's essentially the flat six uh, step, uh, the minor six step, and you make it like a, a major seven chord. Which I, which I really love, you know, because it needs that on, on that step there on the six, uh, the flat, uh, the minus six step there, C major seven chord, uh, you can just play straight up. Um, oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm making this up. Let's listen to it again. Actually, I was approaching this from a rather bluesy kind of way because uh, yeah, it does go uh, C major seven, which means that you can play E minor pentatonic, good old, uh, on that chord, and then go into for the B seven. You can you can play like um, E harmonic minor. It works really well to just. <laughs> There. So it's, um, which is essentially uh, very much like uh, the thrill is gone. So C major seven to B seven and uh, E minor seven or E minor. Okay. So um, I was actually playing it in a rather bluesy way because I was um, at, I was actually making that um, chord, the C major seven, I was actually playing a, uh, a flat seven on that, uh, which makes it, I mean, it's like playing the blues scale then. And uh, that just gives it that extra kind of blues, especially when you're playing on a, on a C major seven chord. And I was just, you know, using my, uh, using my feel and my uh, ears more so than thinking about theory actually there for a minute. And, um, and uh, yeah, it works. You know, when you when you play with conviction and you and you you try and play things that make sense, even if sometimes it isn't, you know, technically wrong. Like I was saying before, uh, like for example, playing the E minor pentatonic over an E major blues kind of context. If you play it with like intent, you play it with intention. Uh, when the, when the strong intention is there, and 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 you're really going for like strong phrases, like you're you like what if you you know consider you're playing like speaking if you if what you're saying is very clear uh, even if it's wrong you know it comes across um, in, a, in a really great way so uh, I guess that's something to think about you know when you jam in general and that's the, the, the reason that blues is so amazing isn't it because you you can have something like the, the, the minor pentatonic scale you can have just that that one thing and you can you can have so much fun with that. You can play the greatest blues solos with just that one scale. You know, you, you don't necessarily need to know a whole lot of other stuff. I mean, um, I mean, I say that, and of course, I use a lot of other things, you know, to color my playing. The main thing being an awareness of what the chord tones are when you're when you're soloing. Um, so. I, you know, I, I definitely use chord tones a lot and uh, would recommend, uh, you know, getting getting aware of that kind of thing, you know, uh, because it can really help you open up uh, and, and play with more, more colorful kind of uh, playing. But having said that, the blues is amazing, like I'm saying, because you, you don't need necessarily all of that stuff. You can get away with playing something as simple as the minor blue minor pentatonic and just play a great heartfelt music uh, that's the power of of the blues you know the large part of why of why I love it so much you know because it's it's also accessible you know to 
to anyone that can get their hands around, uh, wrap their head around, you know, the minor pentatonic scale, which is uh, a pretty great thing to to start learning, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, that's definitely part of the power of blues for, for me, anyway. That it's so accessible and it it so makes you think about what you play and like to play with, you know, you try and play with with your heart rather than think too much about stuff like theory and whatnot. Um, of course, it's crazy helpful to have that knowledge, but ideally blues is the kind of thing that it's, it's, good, for, it's good for practicing, not thinking about all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, if you were to add, you know, some kind of a harmony and theory element to your minor pentatonic, based soloing, I would very much go for um, becoming very aware of arpeggios and core tones. Core, to core tones, in, in other words, you know, that those are the arpeggios, right? Uh, that's one way that can be really helpful to um, to open up your, your playing. And I mean, I'm saying that as, a, as somebody who's played a lot of jazz as well, you know, there was a time when I was um, very deep into jazz, uh, like as a, you know, main, main kind of thing. And you know, when you have to play on a solo, a solo, for example, on a track that you've never encountered before, you've never seen that, uh, you don't really understand necessarily the harmonic context that you're in, you're not even sure what key some parts of the song are in. Uh, at those moments, if you can play the chord tones, play the arpeggios, you can't go wrong. Like it's impossible to play wrong notes if you're playing the chord tones of the chords as they are written down. So for me, that was always like a, a you know, something to, to lean towards. Like if you can't figure out what key something is in, it's like, oh, well, at least I can play the arpeggios because, you know, I, I, I know what a, when I see an, an, you know, let's say E minor seven flat five, I'm like, oh, what can I play on that? Well, I can play the. seven flat five arpeggio at least you know so uh, so yeah that's one reason to get good at arpeggios is because you can navigate uh, harmonic contexts and know that you can't go that wrong if you actually are playing the arpeggios because that's literally like outlining the chords so there we go guys so uh, it's just a tiny little um uh tip can i play guitar like lil wayne oh man i think i would need to practice more uh um to do that uh let me see so i'm gonna uh, uh, have to uh, skip out pretty soon but um uh let me uh let me see what uh what's going on here <laughs> first time i've ever won something on the internet i love it um yeah enjoy that phil uh, just send me an an email there. Um, I appreciate it. The, the hat is still getting some love on the internet. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so I think we covered uh, some of the modal thinking there. Uh, when Okay, so Gabor, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. When you were a beginner, how did you implement these licks into your playing? Did you learn them? for other players. What is the process to learn to play like this? Okay. Oh, and Ian, yeah, um, do put the link to um, to the um, Facebook um, Jam Fam. I appreciate it. Uh, so to answer your question, um, how do I implement these licks? Did I learn them from other players? Yeah, so, I mean, you're very much hitting on why um, why I make jam tracks because that was really how I worked uh, my playing into what it is today. Uh, and that's why I'm putting out all these, that's literally why I'm putting out all these jam tracks because I think it's one of the, if not the greatest way to um, uh, take stuff that you learn and make it you know, your own and be creative with it and make it into something that becomes language you know um so when i when you learn a lick 
it's like th those are like a you know that's that's like a little chunk um it's like a few words that are put together but those words don't get much meaning before you get really good at using them in lots of different conversations you know so in other words when you learn a lick say you know i i i it's been a long a lot of time transcribing uh, by ear uh, players that i was enjoying you know which also is good for your ears so it's uh, it's one you know one reason to uh, to do that in itself is is, is because it, it develops your ears which also makes you play better um, cheers everybody mm. but um I would say, you know, take take licks that you love and that you have um, picked up one way or another, you know, even if it's um, from, um, you know, tabs, you know, if there's any of the ones that you, licks that you have seen on the channel here, you know, that you like, go grab the tab or, or, or try and pick it up from the video itself. Um, and, and then what you want to do is you want to, take that lick and try and play it in lots of different contexts, you know, like, um, you don't want to just say, okay, now I've learned that lick and then that's way I can play a blues lick in A. What, what you, what you want to do is, you know, um, well, first of all, try it in lots of different like types of feels. So like put on like 10 different jam tracks in A. I actually have uh, playlists now for like, you know, backing tracks in A, backing tracks in D minor. And, you know, so uh, you can you can hit up one of those playlists um, and, um, you know, that way you can take something and try and m make it musical uh, in lots of different ways. And when you're doing that, you're already starting to apply yourself to the mix and, and those licks can start to become more like you, more like your licks, you know? Uh, and the next thing to do is, is put it in lots of different keys and also to try and play it maybe in different ways on the neck. Uh, that one's maybe a little bit more advanced, but like definitely to try and play it in more than one key. Cause when you're doing that again, you're conceptualizing it more and, and understanding it on a deeper level and adding it to your general vocabulary in a way that you wouldn't if you were just playing it in one way, in one key. Um, so it's really just taking those licks and uh, using them in, in lots of different ways. I actually talk about this, uh, this very idea in the, the extended lesson that I uh, just published on uh, Patreon. There's a link to my Patreon down there. And also there's actually a link to the track. It's the slow blues in A, uh, the lesson for that uh, solo. Um, talks about exactly that about how you know to take licks and kind of run away with them and um and make them your own uh, i think that's where it gets really fun you know when 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 we have gathered enough licks to have a great vocabulary and have uh, spent enough time jamming uh with those licks that they uh, really become a, a great part of our playing um and yeah so that that's uh, that's literally why I put out all these jam tracks, you know, because I think uh, playing is like, it's the greatest thing you can do when you're learning. Um, of course, you know, you gotta watch, like if you have some bad habits or da -da -da, all that sort of stuff, but really it's super fun and it's creative and like you're making music, which at the end of the day is it's kind of the, the, it's the point of it, isn't it? Like to have fun, you know, expressing yourself, like, to be able to play and make music and, and get in the zone with music. That's the joy, isn't it? To be in the zone. And then, you know, whatever you can do to make yourself have more fun uh, being in the zone, that's what you need to do, right? Um, so yeah, uh, there we go, guys. Uh, now really talk about that jazzy scale. Ooh, I'm not sure which one he's talking about, which one you're talking about. Uh, but that jam that I just had, I definitely used, there was one very jazzy scale that I used. So we're in E minor, and on the B7, I made that one into a B altered. Yeah? And um, the 
altered scale or um, um, Superlocrian is another word for it. Um, that one is a really tasty little thing. It's the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale. So um, B7 altered, you would want to play C uh, melodic minor. And uh, I was definitely doing that, you know, I was doing it like a couple of licks. And in fact, I've just just uh, the other week, I put out a, um, a Wednesday warm-up. Obviously, the Wednesday warm-ups are still going strong. Um, actually, in April, it will, it will be one year of Wednesday warm-ups. Uh, but yeah, uh, very recently, uh, the not last week, but the week before, I believe it was, uh, I made an altered licks, um, altered scale licks warm-up. So uh, hit that one up. Uh, the tab is free, and the tab uh, and, and um, lesson and all that sort of stuff is on... Uh, Patreon. So uh, so there we go guys. Um, that is one way to get those kind of jazzy licks uh, under your fingers and then uh, obviously have uh, some jam tracks as well for learning uh, and, and really spending some time with the altered scale. It's a fun sound. Uh, I was using that that lick as well actually when I was playing which is a lick that works on the altered scale but it, you can make it work in loads of different ways and I was actually playing around with it as a theme because uh, it also works on the minor scale, so E minor. So I was using it there and I was using it on the A minor chord. sweep um sweep picking there but yeah just slide up so in e minor i slide up to the ninth so 13th to 14th fret on the e string and then i bar with my first finger on the 12th fret and then slide down to that ninth again that nice and kind of jazzy sound that emphasizes the ninth um slide from six to seven and then on the b7 sliding there from a, a note that doesn't belong in the scale but you know you're that's the power of chromaticism you know you you as long as you go where you're going in a smooth kind of way you can play literally any note in the world uh, and um, so I'm just sliding up from nine to ten there <laughs> hanging out. I appreciate it very much. Like I said, uh, there's going to be a large size uh, giveaway very, very soon. Uh, the channel is going to hit 100 million views within the next uh, week or two. And uh, I've got, uh, you know, guitar companies uh, involved and we'll, they will be um, adding some, some uh, stuff uh, to the giveaway. And uh, the main prize is going to go, like I said, to some, anybody who is signed up with me on Patreon. And um, then I will also be giving away uh, prizes uh, for the joy of it, obviously. Um, here, just, you know, to any, anybody here on, um, on YouTube. So, uh, there we go, guys. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have one more little jam. Um, let's see, what's it gonna be? I'll do a little bit of this slow blues. It's a very long one, so I'll just do a little bit. I'll play you out on, a, on, a, on the last track of... Uh, into the Blues Volume 4. So um, if you haven't already got it, uh, go and grab it. Today, uh, that album and everything else in my store is 40% off. Uh, there's a discount code that you can, uh, you just have to enter that at the end, and then uh, you get 40% off anything on my website today. Uh, so I appreciate the uh, support on there, and I hope that you guys will have tons of fun with uh, the music that's on there. Um, and also, you know, uh, check out Spotify. 
I have started putting out a lot of music on my main Spotify. I just finished a track yesterday that it's going to come out in a couple of weeks. And I just put out Loop Improvisations Volume 1, which came out uh, actually a week ago today. Uh, go and check that one out. Uh, appreciate the support. You know, add it to some playlists, that kind of thing on Spotify. And also, uh, my Jam Tracks um, profile on Spotify, the new home for the Jam Tracks on Spotify, only dedicated to the Jam Tracks. That one is linked below as well. And um, I will be releasing a ton of uh, albums on there this year. And because uh, uh, that's already uh, seem, seems to have uh, found uh, people on there. So I, I appreciate uh, that kind of vibe as well. And, uh, kind of been against Spotify for so long because of the way that they pay artists and all that sort of stuff. But I sort of have given in and, and, and realized that, yeah, it's, that's just the way that things are, are, are set up right now. And uh, at the end of the day, it's like music re will you know reach a lot of people uh, and be of service and uh, a joy to a, a lot of people through Spotify. So I'm like, sure. I'm gonna put up a bunch of stuff there. So there's already a ton of albums up there. Uh, Spotify uh, already has, I have a link to it, um, already has uh, Into the Blues Volume 4 up there as well. So you can go there and stream it. And uh, you know, you can make up your own playlists. Like take, for example, um, a, a, make a playlist of your favorite jam tracks in A. And then once you've learned a lick uh, in A, you know, try it out on like all, try and work around it and, and play it in all of the uh, different styles uh, that all these jam tracks are in A are, are in, you know, so you can kind of uh, make your own playlist like that on, on uh, Spotify. You can do it on, uh, obviously on YouTube as well. Um, make your own playlist of, of backing tracks in a certain key like that. And then just really try and once you've learned a, a lick in a certain key, Try it out in loads of different contexts and then you know go in and out of doing that lick so like play around the scale if that's the lick then you know play around it and play like you know just a fragment of it you know uh, play it in different parts of the bar just really try and mess about with the ideas and that's when they become um your language uh, so yeah, I think uh, that'll that'll be it, guys. Now let's play a little bit of a uh, slow blues right there. I'm gonna play the last track of Into the Blues Volume Four. Um, it's a slow blues in G. So uh, here we go.
Oh man, I do love playing the blues. All right guys, thank you very much for uh, hanging out today. Appreciate it very much. Um, I'll be back very soon. I'm dropping a jam that I am pretty excited about uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's got actually full tab for the intro as well. It's like a Hendrixy uh, kind of situation um, that was uh, actually uh, requested uh, on Patreon. So, um, oh, Argentina in the house, saludas. Love it. Um, but yeah, uh, that one is dropping tomorrow. Uh, that was requested uh, a little while ago. And um, yeah, you can, uh, you know, always feel free to bring uh, requests my way. The main ones that I honor, uh, the, the, you know, the, the ones that are first on this to-do to -do list are obviously the ones that I get um, on Patreon. Uh, so there we go, guys. Appreciate you guys uh, taking time to uh, hang out. Like, uh, like I said, um, check out the Jam Fam forum on Facebook, the new one there where you can share your jams, share your playing, get feedback from, um, from other people uh, there to uh, you know, learn and grow and uh, have fun playing music. Uh, it's already, you know, we just started it, but it's already um, uh, picking up steam and it seems like uh, people really like to share uh, that way. So um, well, well done Ian for um, being the catalyst in making that um, uh, forum happen. And um, head on over there. Have some fun and also head on over to chrisdorama.com uh, forward slash jam tracks to get 40% um, off any of the jam albums there today. I appreciate the support very much. Um, that's it, guys. Have uh, a lovely uh, start to the weekend and uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a new jam. And uh, obviously the Wednesday warm-ups are continuing as well. And uh, hope you have a great weekend. I will see you very soon. Thanks, guys. Take care.